Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at outputting 2D lists from text files, um, but sorted um, by, let's say, for example, um, alphabetical order, numerical order, or even date order. And date order is um, quite a complicated one, um, and it takes quite a bit of conversion um, and use of what's called um, daytime objects. So let's have a look at our 2D list as it stands. We've got this stored in a text file, which you would have seen in previous um, tutorials. And um, it's the Blood Donors program. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a look at um, file reading and file writing uh, with the Blood Donors program. What we've also got here is um, we're going to essentially be able to output um, using a sorted function. So let's just talk through the, the two or three different ways um, that we might do this. The first way of doing it is using a lambda function. Now lambda is a function whereby, um, well it's a methodology um, where you can create anonymous functions. So here for example we're using the sorted function which is built into Python and essentially we're sorting our read list which we've read in from our text file up here. Um, and then what we can do is we can say which column we're going to sort by. So we've said that the lambda we're going to call name. So our function is called name. Um, and we're going to sort by, um, we've said we're going to sort by blood group. So um, blood group is 0, 1, 2, 3. It's the third sub-element. So we'll say that um, we're going to index by 3. What we'll then do is um, we can then print out our um, items. So we've said name sort is a new list based on read list, but sorted version. And um, if it's called name sort, then we can just paste that in to our um, previous nested for loop, which shows us iterating through each of the um, records or each donor and then each of their details. Um, so the number of details that there are, we've just taken the length of the first um, donor and essentially all other donors have the same length. Um, then we can print out our name sort list with some padding so that it appears well formatted. So let's have a look at what that looks like using Lambda then. So we're gonna output all our blood donors. So we're gonna do B and you'll see that here we are Oh, we'll come back to this in a moment. Um, here we are, all the um, donors are sorted by blood group. The next thing then is uh, this here, so this kind of um, using item getter. We haven't yet commented that out. So another method of sorting is using item getter. Now, item getter, unlike lambda, is not um, imported. Well, it, it's not um, imported natively, so we have to, or it's not imported as default, so we have to import that ourselves from the operator module, and we import item getter. I like using it because it, it makes sense, and sometimes students get confused with these anonymous lambda functions, whereas when you say, oh, it's it gets an item based on an index, they kind of understand it. So let's say we sort our um, read list again, and this time we're going to use item getter, and I want to sort by patient number, which is 0, 1, 2, it's the second element, so he equals item getter 2, very similar syntax to be honest to lambda, and we can also add a reverse, which you can do on any sorted function, so we can reverse the order so that it appears instead of smallest to largest, largest to smallest in descending order. And um, we'll bring this in, so I'm sorted by patient number. Uh, we'll put in our 2D um, array, or our nested um, for loop to go through our 2D array. This time we've called it name sort 2, for um, no marks for originality of name there. And um, we've got for loop going through each element in the um, name sort 2. And then another for loop within that going through each of the sub elements for each donor. Um, let's have a look at that. B. And what that should do is it outputs as all sorted by patient number, but in descending order. Now, 
here comes the tricky one, date. If you recall in one of the first videos, um, we had our um, blood donors and we stored them as a string. In order to sort these properly, we need to convert them back into date time objects so Python can actually sort them. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's just going to sort them by um, the day and that's not going to be useful. We might want to sort them by date of birth to find um, young donors or from a certain um, date of birth. Um, and it's quite useful if you're looking at expiry dates of things. Um, we looked at mobile phone contracts in another video. It's a really lengthy um, one hour video on my channel. Um, but that also looks at dates as well. So let's just talk about that. How might we do that? The first thing we need to do, like I said, is we need to iterate through all of our dates and convert them from strings into date time objects. So let's say um, for donors in range. Um, the len of, um, what was the name of our list? Read list. Iterate through the entire list and reset um, the read list donors, oh, connors, donors, oh, CD nors, oh, it's getting late. <laughs> um, element zero, one, two, three, four. Element four, so reset all element four into um, a date time object. So date time, um, string parse time. And I've used this several times. It's uh, not a simple syntax. I actually use the Python um, document documentation for this. Um, but this is like the, the tenth time doing it. So I'm a bit more fluent with it. Um, so we're going to do string parse time, our donors, you know, our read list, and that's going to be um, indexed by donors um, four. So it's exactly the same element we've got here. We're just converting it into a date. Here's the tricky thing, string formatting. So this is our day, and then we did forward slash because it's that's how our dates are laid out. Then we've got month, and then we've got um, year. Now, because our year is a four-digit year, we use capital Y. If you're using a two-digit year, you would use lowercase y. And uh, I actually had to research that on um, Stack myself. And I think all good programmers use Stack. Um, in a previous video, someone was kind of hating and saying, oh, well, you've just shown us um, Stack Overflow. And actually, if I wanted to learn from Stack Overflow, I'd use myself. Well... <laughs> This is how we all learn. We all use Stack Overflow, and we can clearly see here this was like one of the issues we came across using capital Y for a four-digit year. Okay, so that will allow us to convert our date into a date-time object. Now, what is going to happen if we just try printing this out? It's not going to look very good. I don't actually think it's going to um, print properly. So let's say date sort equals. Um, sorted read list and we'll use um, key equals item getter and we're on the fourth element we don't really need to reverse so we'll just leave that blank um, and then let's just print it once again I'm just copying and pasting because essentially it's the same code but we're just sorting by date we're using the date sort to do list. Um, the whole of the date sorted to do list and for in within each element, print all the sub elements. This is just a length of one of set sub element. They're all the same. I could have actually put um, for details in range four if I wanted to, because actually there's only four elements, zero, one, two, three, four. Um, is that right? Yes. No, five, because um, Python is non-inclusive. So for details in range five, print, um, date sort, and date sort. And you'll see what this looks like when we print it out. It's not going to be correct yet. So 
so um, the reason why is because um, we can't, it gets to the end here, and it sorted it correctly in that this is definitely the first date, um, but it can't print it out because date time is um, not a string, it's actually an object. So we need to, once we've sorted, we need to actually convert it back into a string. <laughs> and um, yeah, so here we're going to convert it back into a string. So we just essentially repeat the loop, but reverse the process, right? So we're just saying for donors in range len of read list, read list donors for, and we're going to convert back this time, we're going to do string format time, and we're going to use, um, oh, actually, let's just do this properly. So we've got read list donors for is equal to read list donors. Syntax is uh, horrible for this. Um, and we'll use the um, dot string format time method, and then the the format is exactly the same day month year. So that will convert it back into a string, and I think that will fix it. So just those two lines of code: one, we convert it into a date time object. Let's comment it. Convert all dates into date. Objects or dates, date strings into daytime objects, sort by date, <laughs> convert them back to string, convert the daytime objects back to strings, and then we output, and that should be it. We have this typo. Can't believe I've only just noticed that now. This typo has been there for four videos. Okay, so what we can see now is this is now sorted by date. And it wasn't simple. I did say that originally. You have to convert into date time object, sort it, and convert back to string. Let me change this so that when we upload this onto Stack Over, not on Stack Overflow, onto GitHub, it's correct. Output all blood donors, find a blood donor. And that effectively is um, our entire program, which teaches you how to do file writing, file reading, and um, padding so that our output looks neat, finding individual um, records in a 2D array, um, using effectively what is a linear search in that previous video, um, yeah, so using uh, having a boolean flag called found equals false, um, and then searching through, outputting any records which match, and the last thing we did was sorting by date using either item getter or lambda. I hope that was useful. Um, it was a long video, not as long as the one hour five minute one that's also on my channel, um, but hopefully it was useful. Cheers.